to be here with you. I'm so honored to be here with you. Oh, it's my honor. Well, it is my honor, Elizabeth. And I, I wanna, I wrote some things I wanna say to you. Um, All right. Okay, good. <laughs> I wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you, and this is a thank you from me, but this is a thank you from so many, 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 many people. Thank so you. many people for your music, for each and every song, each and every song, but even more for the work that it takes to choose the songs, to make the songs and to dig within for that purity of feeling, that righteousness, mm -hmm. that clarity <laughs> that you bring to song that gives us anthems and that helps us move forward. Helps us move forward in righteousness, helps us move forward in spirit, helps us move forward joyfully. The joy that we have so many of us taken from hearing your songs and from singing along with your songs. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that, is, that is work. And the sacrifices that it takes to go out on the road year after year after year, bringing your message and your gift to the people, mm -hmm. I really want to say thank you. So that's what I wanted to start with. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's so nice. Well, it's, it is. <laughs> It's true, because you've been doing it a long time, a long time. for us. Yes, yes, yes. And it's been my pleasure. Mm -hmm. it's been, I've, I've enjoyed every moment, every year. And to, to, to come on stage and, and see smiling faces, mm -hmm. smiling at me, mm -hmm. listening to me, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, my reward. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm just so grateful. And uh, those words that you said were just beautiful to me. You, you are, you are truly a lady of words, beautiful yes. words. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I wonder when you're, when you're on the road how you take care of yourself because, you know, the audience of course gives you, gives you something back, but mm -hmm. it's, also, it's also rough work and mm -hmm. you've got an instrument yes. to take care of. Yes. How, what are some of your rituals? Um, well, I, um, I drink lots of tea and honey Hot tea and honey. I have. Uh, I do breathing exercises. I'm not, um, you know, not as often as I should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I have an exercise that I do. I, I, uh, I scare people when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, 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 a girl um, on UPN asked me to, she said, how do you keep your voice? And I said, well, my, uh, I had a, um, I had a surgery on my vocal cords. I had polyps mm. at one time. And um, um, I was so nervous, I was so scared to, to have them removed. But I prayed, and, and uh, everyone prayed for me, mm -hmm. and I knew that I was going to sing. If I was gonna, you know, it, it, it I could, I could sing, but I couldn't make my highs. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take my voice where I wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, afterwards, and, but, but the Lord sent me the best a surgeon in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Goldman. And um, after the surgery, he sent me to a, a, a lady, a voice culture teacher. And she, to strengthen my, my vocal cords, she uh, gave me this exercise. She, a lot of questions, and they were yes and no, yes and no answers. Mm. And she taught me, she says, now, I want you to come from here, and I want you to blow it out. And I, yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes when I'm walking, I like to walk for my exercise rather mm. than exercise. I'd rather walk. <laughs> and uh, I can be walking down Lakeshore Drive, Yes. <laughs> no. And people look and say, "What is wrong with her?" You know, but it works. It works. It works. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps my voice nice and crisp. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, I've read a story that you tell about hearing Dr. King preach for the first time in yes. 1963 yes. in Birmingham, mm -hmm. and uh, in Montgomery. It was in Montgomery. Montgomery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. And that your father said, I like this man, I like his message. If he can preach it, we can sing it. We can it. sing it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you more about that, about okay. that moment, but also this idea that preachers do one thing, but singers bring something else. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what song can do that perhaps preaching doesn't do? Mm -hmm. All right, well, 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 well Pops 
When we met Dr. King, we happened to be in Montgomery on a Sunday, and we didn't have to sing until that night. So Pops called us to his room and told us that this man Martin was there, Martin Luther King. He had been listening to him on the radio, mm -hmm. wanted to go to his church. And um, we went to his 11 o'clock service, and Pops did. He told us. You know, we got back to the hotel. He said, listen, y'all. I really like this man's message, and I think that if he can preach it, we can sing it. Well, Dr. King, he preaches it. You know how us children, now me, uh, when I first met Sister Mahalia Jackson, mm. you know, us kids, we used to sneak our jump ropes to church. Mm. <laughs> and go, but we didn't want to hear the preacher. We wanted to hear the singing. Uh -huh. You know, we wanted to hear the music. Mm -hmm. So. The, 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 the minister and the, the, the songstress can carry the same message, but that rhythm, that beat, and that sound, you know, that, that tends to sway you. You may miss something, uh, especially kids. They, they don't, we don't like to hear speeches mm -hmm. when we're young, you know. And, uh, but if we hear that message in a song, we'll grab it. Mm -hmm. And this is what we were doing. We, when, when Pop said that, that made us make a transition into from strictly gospel to uh, freedom songs, to protest songs. Mm -hmm. We wrote March Up Freedom's Highway. Mm -hmm. That was for the march from Selma to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Then we wrote It's a Long Walk to D.C., mm -hmm. but I got my walking shoes on. Mm -hmm. That was for the march to Washington. Mm -hmm. We wrote another song for Washington. Washington, we're watching you. What the hell are you going to do? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pops wrote the song, Why Am I Treated So Bad? Mm -hmm. Why Am I Treated So Bad was written around nine black children trying to board a school bus mm -hmm. in Little Rock, Arkansas, mm -hmm. Central High School. They wanted mm -hmm. to integrate the school. And uh, these kids would walk every morning proud with their books walking tall and mm -hmm. neatly dressed. They walk into a crowd of people more than this year, you know, and they were, they were spat at, they were called names, mm -hmm. and, uh, but they would keep on walking. Yeah. They keep on walking. Yeah. And uh, it went on for so long, uh, um, the, the uh, mayor of Little Rock said, let those children go to school. Mm -hmm. The governor mm -hmm. of Arkansas let those children board that bus. Mm -hmm. And the President of the United States said, let those children board the bus. And so Pops, that particular day, all of us were around the table, we wanted to see these kids mm. get on that bus. And uh, that particular day, there was a policeman standing at the bus door, and he put his billy club across the door. Mm. And Pops said, now why is he doing that? Mm -hmm. Why are you treating them so bad? Yeah. And he wrote that song that evening. This song became Dr. King's favorite. Mm -hmm. Dr. King, you know, we would sing before he'd speak, and uh, getting ready to go to the meetings, he would tell Pops, mm -hmm. now, Stape, <laughs> you're going to sing my song tonight, right? Uh -huh. Pops said, oh, yeah, Doctor, you're going to sing your song. <laughs> so uh, the songs, um, uh, I feel, you know, the message that he preached, we take those songs, I mean, we take those words and put them in a song mm -hmm. and put a melody to them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, just uh, uh, you know, and see, music is universal. Music, everybody. Uh, we, we have traveled the world, and it's amazing that people don't know what we're saying sometimes, mm -hmm. but they feel it. They feel it, yeah. And, yeah, we, we were in Japan back in 69. It was traditional Japanese, traditional Japan. The, the kimonos with the little humps in the back and mm -hmm. little wooden shoes mm -hmm. and the toe out with the, you know, <laughs> they're regular. And so um, no, hard, no one hardly spoke English. Mm -hmm. There was one hotel in Japan that they had built for foreigners, you know. And um, we were in Japan, we traveled, you know, um, Osaka. Sapporo, all over Japan. For six weeks we were there. But every audience, we had a trans translator who had to talk about our first four songs, and then we'd sing them, mm -hmm. let them know what we're singing about. Then mm -hmm. we, but you know, you're singing these songs, and I was amazed because I was a young girl then. Mm -hmm. And um, 
these Japanese people were tears streaming down their eyes, down their faces. You know? And I said, they don't know what we're saying. But as I grew, I learned too that I can hear Miriam Makiba. Yes. And I don't know what she's saying, mm -hmm. but I feel her. Yes, you know? that's right. So uh, it's just um, a universal message. And um, I, I just, I'm just grateful that uh, the songs come through through your poems. We can make a real good song. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we could. We could do a, <laughs> Yes, we, we could. We could do some million sellers. Oh, my goodness, yes, <laughs> yes. If you all look up and see Elizabeth gone, you know she's on the road. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, the stables went and pulled Elizabeth. Uh, that okay? I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, oh, I have to a walk to Washington. It's a long walk to Washington, mm -hmm. and you're a Chicagoan. Yes. And so we have to talk about the president. Yes. Um, so anything you want to say, um, but I wonder, especially, what you felt election night, where you were. Mm -hmm. I was home. I was, I wanted to be, um, no, that was an oration. I was home on, no, election night, I was home, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so many things happening around this guy, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, yes, everyone else went out to Grant Park, mm -hmm. but I chose not to. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'll enjoy this better sitting right there in front of the television mm -hmm. without all the, you know, people pushing and carrying on. But I, I, um, I tell you, my heart, if I could have, I would have done a cartwheel. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I couldn't get up there. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> but, but I cried, Elizabeth. Tears just rolled, tears just streamed. I just, I was just so happy. I was so overwhelmed. I walked through the house. I talked to Pops. I mm. talked to Dr. King. Mm. I just, just, it was just the best feeling. You know, you, you, you don't think you're gonna live to see this. Yes. You know, with all that you've been through and all that you've seen, never, yes. never would I have thought in my lifetime Mm -hmm. I would have seen a black president. Mm -hmm. And it was just, just I was just blurbering. I was just crying and talking, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, 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 but it was a good feeling. Mm -hmm. wonder, you know, I, just, I was just so happy. I was just so, you know, if, if Pops could have seen that, mm -hmm. I could just see his face. I could just see his grin, you know, and because and, he laughed, he went happy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I could hear him, uh -huh. and um, so and and then my phone started ringing, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, "No, nah, no, nah, I ain't answering." I <laughs> said, "Leave a message. Leave a message. Uh -huh. I hear the message." Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm telling you, that was um, that was the best feeling that I have felt mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. That was the best feel. I won't say I said the best next to meeting Dr. King. Yes, you know, that was just. Uh, 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 indescribable, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just um, you're just happy. You feel joyous, and you mm -hmm. feel just, just uplifted. And oh my goodness! Um, and then the guy is easy to look at. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. He. He's easy on the eyes. It's, you know? It is wonderful having a cute president. Ooh, and, yes, indeed. And he is, is to have a good looking president. And you know, I, <laughs> I look at him, and you remember Sam Cooke. Uh -huh. I said, Lord, this man looks so much like Sam. <laughs> and he walked like Sam. Oh. And I, I, now I wonder if he can sing. <laughs> if, if, if he can sing, it's all over. <laughs> But I tell you, yeah, he, he's a handsome guy. And I was so upset, I almost had a chance to work, I had a chance to work for him, you know, when he was uh, running for senator. Mm -hmm. And they called me, and one of my friends, she said, Babis, this guy's good looking. You gotta come on. <laughs> you know, I didn't know him, I didn't uh, know him. And we don't live far apart. I wondered where you live in Chicago. We, yeah. we're, we're right, he's in Hyde Park, we're like, we were South Shore, mm -hmm. like 10 blocks mm -hmm. from where he is. And um, um, 
but we had to be working. So I couldn't, uh, I, you know, I was always doing little, um, um, what do you call them? Not, not I, I, what do you call it? I'd make a song, I'd mm -hmm. create a song for politicians like, oh, okay. like Harold Washington, oh, yeah. and I did Harold Washington, they wanted to do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, because he had, he had been mayor Mm -hmm. And he was running again, and they wanted to use the song "Do It Again." So I just uh, wrote something around that, different from what we were singing. But um, Obama, if I had met him and seen him, I would have <laughs> known exactly what to write. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, 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 someone said, "Mavis, Michelle is not going." I said, "Oh, child! <laughs> All she got to do is look at me and see I'm old enough to be his <laughs> grandmother." <laughs> But uh, I tell you, there ain't nothing wrong with feeding your eyes. That's right. <laughs> that is right. With some good feeding, feasting. That's you know. right. Yeah. Well, well the well, journey, I mean, it's been such a journey. You talk about that, that sense of, you know, thinking that you wouldn't live to see the day. Yes, and, yes. and when I read about Pops yes. and about his growing up on the Dockery Plantation. Yes. And you know the the both the community and the music there, mm -hmm. but also living in Mississippi, coming Mississippi, up in Mississippi right. in that time. Right. So I wonder what you know what would he tell you all as you were coming along, and how how did you think about about that piece of the American story and your uh -huh. story? You know, pops, um, when we first started singing, we 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 really were more or less singing on the living room floor to amuse ourselves. Mm -hmm. And one evening my Aunt Katie, Katie came through and Katie says, y'all sound pretty good. I believe I want y'all to sing for my church. And Lord, we were so happy, we were gonna sing somewhere other than on the living room floor. We went to <laughs> Katie's church uh -huh. that Sunday and we sang this very first song that Pops taught us. Mm -hmm. The people clapped us back three times. Three mm. times we had to sing the same song. What song was that? Will the circle be unbroken? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Pop says, shucks, these people like us. We're going <laughs> home and learn some more songs. <laughs> and, uh, and we did, and, and, and from then that, we started getting calls to come to churches, to say, calls to Kankakee, Joliet, places around Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, a VJ Records, a lot of people think that Motown is the first black recording company, mm -hmm. but it was VJ. Mm. Vivian Carter and a Jimmy uh, Carter. That was, uh, she called Pops and she wanted us to record. And the Pops told him, he said, well, I don't know. I don't know about that making records. You know, Pops didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, uh, and we didn't, because I was about eight years old. And, and we didn't record until I was 13. Mm -hmm. When I was 13, we recorded Uncloudy Day and Will the Circle Be Unbroken. Mm -hmm. And um, she called Pops and she said, Staples, this record is selling like an R&B, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, and I was singing bass. <laughs> I was singing bass. As a little girl. As a little girl, <laughs> little skinny girl. And people wouldn't believe it, you know, the record was so hot. People, the discharge would say, this is little 13 year old Mavis Staples singing this. And people would actually have bet before <laughs> we get to a place. That ain't no little girl. That's got to be a, you know, I had to be a big fat lady or, or a man. And see, because we would sing the song down in harmony. Mm. And when my part would come, I'd say, well, 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 oh, Lord, they tell me now. Mm. I, I, I got a home. All right, so we get to these places and on un cloudy day, we start the people, just as that part would come, my brother would step up to the mic and you'd hear them say, oh, I told you that wasn't no little girl. I told you. <laughs> and while they're going through that, I sneak in in front of Purvis and I start. And boy, the place would go wild. We would have so much fun. One man came, he said, little old girl, I bet my whole paycheck on you. That wasn't too smart. Pop said, see, you shouldn't bet. You shouldn't bet. But uh, we'd have fun with that. But, uh, and I started telling you about that, Elizabeth, and forgot what you asked me. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but I was asking about, I was asking about the, the about Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi, yes. Yep, yep. Okay, well, Pops, this is what happened. This song, Uncounted Day, took mm -hmm. us all down to the South. Mm -hmm. Our songs was, was hot in the South sooner than they were in the North. So we started 
traveling down there. So Pops would, would, would tell us what to expect, how to be. My sisters and I, if we would go downtown, he would tell us too, don't you all start nothing, yeah. but don't take nothing. Mm. He wouldn't allow, you know, Pops, growing up as a boy in the South, he, um, excuse me, and his father was strong like that. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't take, Pops, Pops would scare us sometimes because he mm -hmm. would, these guys try to run us off the highway, mm -hmm. Pops would run right back into them. Mm -hmm. and, he'd and he'd bang them back, you know. Mm -hmm. with, I said, oh, Lord, Daddy. We went to jail. Mm -hmm. we, we, we beat up a white man in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And um, I was driving the getaway car. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a night driver. Now, <laughs> what had he done? I, he talked about me. Mm. He said something, he called me a name mm -mm. that my father didn't. I had driven from Jackson, Mississippi, and I was filling up, I was gonna drive another 200 miles. So I told him, I pulled in the service station, and um, he, he gassed up the car, and he asked for his money. And I asked him to wash the windshield, you know, because the bugs were on the windshield, and he snatched around and he wiped it, and, and uh, then he came for his money again. I asked him for a receipt, cash receipt. And um, he said, on the, um, you come over to the office if you want a receipt. Mm -hmm. And Pop said, pull over there, maybe. So I was way on this outside pump, and the office was way over, so I pulled over. Pops went in to get the receipt. I saw this guy, and Pops asked him, why would he call me that name? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I saw he shook his hand in Pops' face. Mm -hmm. When he did that, Pops clocked him. That's it. <laughs> he, he went, down, you know, and they fought over into the, the, the grease, you know, where they fix cars. Mm -hmm. Pops had his house slippers on. He slipped down. Oh, my goodness. So when he slipped down, the guy come at him with a crowbar. Yep. Ooh. And my sister, she ran over. She jumped down, beating him on his back and beating him. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so he got away from her and he was going to his office. Well, I knew when he was going to his office, he was going for a gun. Mm -hmm. I woke my brother up. See, Purvis, he thought it was just two ladies and this. He thought Dad was an old man because he had gray hair. Mm -hmm. But Pop said white hair from 18 years old. Oh. You know, he was premature gray. Mm -hmm. And so, but he was, Pops was, because we were young then, and he was young. Mm -hmm. so, so Purvis was covered up with coats, and he didn't see him. And when I saw him run to his office, I said, Purvis, Purvis, they're fighting, they're fighting. He came from under them coach like Superman. <laughs> come out, <laughs> you know, come out that, that, that booth, telephone booth. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Purvis ran in, he went up. I saw him go up and come down on this guy. Whoa. Cause Purvis was short, the guy was tall, skinny, young guy, mm -hmm. young man. And so um, and Purvis got back in there huffing and puffing. Purvis said, we better go to the Lorraine Motel. Mm -hmm. We were right around the corner from the Lorraine. Mm -hmm. Pop said, no, we're going home. We're going home. He said, drive, Mayor. I said, Daddy, I don't know if I can drive now. He said, drive on, drive. I started driving, and all of a sudden, I see these three lights oh. coming behind me. Just, I said, Daddy, there's some lights behind me. Mm. He said, Mavis, get on across this bridge. I was getting on the bridge that divides West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So I got on the bridge, and uh, they right on me now. Mm -hmm. I said, Pops, I don't know. He said, get on across the bridge, maybe. I get across that bridge. They jumped out of those cars, shotguns, dogs mm -hmm. were barking. Mm -hmm. They had these biggest German Shepherd dogs I ever seen. And they had us standing on the highway with our hands over our heads. And uh, they, 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 uh, uh, searched our car. Now we want this. This young man told them that we robbed him, didn't pay for our gas, mm. robbed him, and oh, that's me doing that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting that. Okay, he he um he told him that we robbed him, beat him up, didn't pay for our gas. So they searched the car. They found this uh, cigar box that the people in Jackson, Mississippi had paid us with. Mm. The money was in it. So one of them said, this is what we're looking for. Oh. And uh, Pop said, that's our money, officer. And he said, well, you get this money. 
He said, we sing for that money in Jackson, Mississippi. These are my children, and we mm -hmm. sing gospel music. And uh, we sang in Jackson. He said, I got to hear what kind of singing you do, boy. That's the first time I heard somebody call my father a boy. Ooh. And that just went all through me. I, mm. I'm still standing with my, but I'm scared to death too, because this is in the 60s. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. King had just gotten the movement started. You know, we didn't know what these men, they handcuffed Pops to the car, said this one looked like he want to run. Mm. They, we showed them our records. We had books and pictures that we sold at our concerts. And, and they just ignored that. All of a sudden, one of them took our car, made a U-turn. That's what scared me. Mm -hmm. He took our car. And they put, separated us, put us in different. My brother and I were handcuffed together because they only had three sets of handcuffs. Mm. My sister and pops were handcuffed behind their backs. Mm. I've never been so happy to see a jail. They took us to jail. Took us to jail. I thought they were taking us out in the woods, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we get to the jail. The first person you see is this old black man mopping the floor. Mm. And he looked up, he said, Papa Staples, mm. what you doing here? Mm. Yeah, and, and uh, Pops just walked on past. And then he looked up and saw us. He said, and your children. Mm. You know, they don't say children. They say, and your children. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we walked on past. We laughed about that a lot later. Uh -uh. <laughs> but. but uh, but we went in, and the, the chief came out. He said, all right, now who's going to tell me what, what happened here? And Pop said, I'll tell you. If you take me to another room, I'll tell you what happened. They came back out. For, first thing, that the, the chief told them, uh, they sent uh, my sister out to the car for this receipt. Mm -hmm. Pop said, told him back there that he went to get the receipt. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, where was it? Pop said, somewhere. And she found the receipt. It was bloody, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it, but it was a receipt that we paid for our gas. Mm -hmm. He brought Pops out of there. He said, get those handcuffs off those people. Mm -hmm. Get them off. He said, we're trying to get this mess straightened up down here. And these young bucks trying to keep it going, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, let these people go home. We got in the car and we went home. The next morning, headlines. Chicago Defender, Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Courier, Staple Singers go to jail for beating up a white man. <laughs> they say, oh, y'all tough, huh? Y'all go down there. <laughs> but but uh, the next time we went to Memphis, mm -hmm. you looked over to the right. We were in the Mason Temple, 5,000 seater. Mm -hmm. It's Masonic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mason Temple. Over here is some, uh, what do you call them, balconies. Mm -hmm. You see the chief, and about 12 of his policemen <laughs> dressed to the nine, you know, real neat in their uh -huh. uniforms. And Pops looked over there, he said, Chief, <laughs> it's mighty nice of y'all to come out here to see us. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, but who's minding the town? <laughs> <laughs> Looked like all the policemen were over there. <laughs> so that made that a little better. That, you know, that was, uh, but that, that was a time Pops, he schooled us, you know, and, and my sister Yvonne and I had lived in Mississippi with my grandmother mm -hmm. in Mount Bayou, Mississippi, and, uh, but we didn't see any. When you were children? When we were children. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any, any, any action like that because Mount Bayou is all black town. Mm. Only time we would see some white people would we go to Cleveland, which was about nine miles from Mount Bayou, to shop, mm -hmm. go shopping. But we'd be with my grandmother, and we were little bitty kids. We were, I was like seven, seven, six and seven years old. We went to school down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister loved it. She stayed and graduated, <laughs> and I wanted to come home. You know, I, 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 my grandmother would just stay home, and she wouldn't let me suck my fingers. She would <laughs> switches, you know, those switches. She'd get my little leg. <laughs> she got me one time. The kids knew I could sing. They pushed me on the stage at a variety show. And I'd been here in the jukebox. Every morning you go to school, the jukeboxes are going, you know? Mm -hmm. And all I was hearing was, uh, you made me leave my happy mm -hmm. home. Ella, John, Ella and Buddy John. Mm -hmm. When they pushed me on the stage, that's what came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs>
I was like this. And so I saw my uncle, the school was, was, was elementary to junior, and he was like 16, 17 years old. I saw him coming around the wall. I said, oh, he's proud. He coming to pat me on my head. Yeah. <laughs> he came up there. He snatched me off that stage. <laughs> pushed me out. Walked me home. Pushed me home. Gone. Pushed me home. Pushed me in the door. When we got oh. to grandma, my grandma's out. This young one up at the schoolhouse singing the blues. Oh. <laughs> and what did he... Nobody ever told me what to sing, mm -hmm. you know? I didn't know blues from nothing else back mm -hmm. then. And my grandmother, oh, you singing the blues, huh? <laughs> you go out there and get me some switches. Oh. <laughs> I was smart, you know though. I went out there, I came back, I said, Grandma, I can't find no switches. <laughs> <laughs> Did she fall for that? <laughs> no, she did. She said, you don't want me to go. You don't want me to have to go. So I went back. I came back some little twigs, but they were strong enough to hurt my little legs. And then she told me, you don't sing no blues in this family. You sing church songs. Well, I was confused. You know, I just wanted to sing, but I didn't. The group hadn't started yet. Mm -hmm. The family hadn't started. So, uh. I would print letters home to Mama. I said, Mama, I want to come home. Grandma won't let me sing. I, she sent me back to school. I had a little short dress, you know, and the kids were laughing at me. I had little pink whips on my legs. <laughs> so uh, those were, were times. Uh, um, I had times in Mississippi, you know, I integrated a Washeteria. That's in one of my songs. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm telling some stories in those songs yeah. that are true. Mm -hmm. In the We'll Never Turn Back CD. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, I was in the Washington Forest, Mississippi. My granddaddy lived down there. And we had stopped to see him, and I had a little bundle of clothes I wanted to wash. So I went to the Washeteria, and it was loaded, you know. And so I was walking back to his house, and here's another side with two white ladies sitting in there. So I went in there and uh, put my clothes in. They didn't say anything to me, you know. And I started washing my clothes. And uh, at this time, I was so young, I didn't know uh, what was going on, you know. So somebody got to my granddaddy's house and told him, Thornton, your grandbaby up there done integrated the washing too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when, I, when, that, when the black ladies saw me over there, uh -huh. they started coming over there. <laughs> so, my grandpa, he was, in, when I got home, he had a yard full of people. There come my baby. There come my <laughs> <laughs> And he called me Mabel. Mabel, she, baby Mabel, she integrated that washing. I said, Lord, I'm doing some things out here I don't even know. I forgot how old I was then, but I was young. And uh, daddy said, maybe y'all come on, we better get on. <laughs> we better go. We, we were going to someplace else in Mississippi, but we stopped in to see him, you know. But yeah, we, we, he pops taught us things that we should know mm -hmm. when, while we were down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about um, the song, Respect Yourself? Respect Yourself. Isn't that a good song? That is a great song. That is a great song. That's, a, that's my favorite. Is that your favorite? That is my favorite song. You know, I listen to Popsy, and Popsy is so cool. If you disrespect everybody. I say, Daddy, you can really sing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's my favorite. And that song, um, Mac Rice wrote that. Mm -hmm. Mac Rice used to be with Wilson Pickett. Huh. And he used to sing, they used to sing R&B. I can't think of the name of the group, mm. but uh, it was Mac Rice, Eddie Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know, Eddie Floyd sing Knock Knock on Wood. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mac wrote that song especially for us. Mm. And he came in the studio while we record. Well, now the part, de -de 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 -de. Mm -hmm. he told Pop, he said, now Pop, now Pop, right here, here's where y'all go. <laughs> de -de 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 -de. <laughs> Pop said, man, that ain't stable singing. I don't think we should say that. He said, oh, no, Pop. This is a staple singer. This, this is, everybody would love this. Uh, grown ups, the kids, everybody, because mm -hmm. it's a little jingle. And lo and behold, when we started saying that, it was just, you couldn't control the people uh -huh. in the audience on the spectrum when it first came out. And um, it's just still my favorite song. 
And do you, do you sing it yourself? Do you sing oh, yes. it without the... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we sing it. We have to sing it. We have to sing Respect Yourself, and um, I'll take you there. Now, there's a young man that sings background with us. Mm -hmm. He sings Pop's part. Mm. But before before we got him, I was singing Pop's part. Mm. We, You know, yeah, a lot of songs that Pop's used to sing, I like Circle Be Unbroken, mm -hmm. uh, we recorded Circle Be Unbroken at least seven times. Hmm. That was our very first song that Pops taught us. And and we couldn't get away from it. It seemed like we wanted to just keep recording it. But Pops always sang it. Mm -hmm. But so uh, after Pops passed in, I started singing it. Mm -hmm. I had to sing it. And I recorded it. The, I, my first CD after Pops passed was Have a Little Faith. Mm -hmm. And I, Will the Circle Be Unbroken is on that. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you're singing, is he is he with you when you're singing? Oh Lord, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I didn't think, I just didn't think that I was gonna be able to make it after mm -hmm. after Pop's pass. Mm -hmm. I I, uh, I it took me a, a while. You know, I I I was just depressed. I procrastinated. I I just just my sister pushed me. Yvonne, she said, Mavis, you know, Dad would want you to sing. Mm -hmm. And you have to go on and, and continue singing. And you know what Dad used to tell you? If you don't use your gift, the Lord will take it back. You know, mm -hmm. that's your God-given gift. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know music. I don't know anything about my, my voice, my, my uh, singing ability. It's my gift, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I started thinking, I said, <laughs> uh, she's right. Pops would want me to sing. And then I want to keep my father's legacy alive. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I got started, just happened, a friend of mine, now he wasn't a friend, he was a new person in my life. He called, he told Yvonne that uh, Bob Dylan or somebody told him, nobody could sing this song but Mavis. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, had written the song for 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, he had lost two friends. And uh, I told Yvonne, I said, I don't know him. You know, I said, tell him to fax the lyrics over. Mm -hmm. And he faxed the lyrics, and the lyrics fit me like a glove. Mm. I said, whoa, the song is called In Times Like These. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I said, Yvonne, tell him I'll do it. And uh, when we did that, when we finished it, he said, well, Miss Staples, what are you going to do now? I said, you know, I don't know. I want to make a record, but all of the... the, the Corn Studios are gone from Chicago. Curtis Mayfield is gone. Everybody, there's nobody to turn to. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So he said, I can help you. You know, he said, I, I have a makeshift studio in my home. And, and I liked the way I worked with him on that song. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, okay. Uh, um, uh, I'll get, pull some songs together and we'll come by your place and we'll see what, what can happen. <coughs> Great record. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful record, and uh, that's what got me going. Started back, you know, have a little faith, and um, the next one was, and it was so I was so blessed, you know, because do you know I had to spend my own money. I said I'm gonna make this record. Mm -hmm. No record company would take me. Mm. No, no record company. I said, well. I heard Pop say one time, we're going to make a record. I said, we're going to take our own money. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. Mm -hmm. I would go to the bank, get money, pay everybody, pay the studio time, the musicians. And um, then I started shopping it. I said, well, I'll mm -hmm. shop it. Nobody would take it. Mm -hmm. The last one, I was about to start selling the record out of my trunk of my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Alligator Records, a blues label, mm -hmm. right there in Chicago. Bruce Iglar, he wanted to take the record. And I said, well, thank you. And then he reimbursed me of everything I spent. You know, and uh, we had a good ride on that record. Good, really good. And I got all the blues people started knowing me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the blues writers, you know. And uh, then um, something happened there that he didn't do, that uh, some claws that had me oh. off his label. And, and uh, so then I was out there again. Lo and behold, the Lord sent uh, uh, anti-records. You want to sign me? Yes, Mavis, we want to sign, we like that. Well, have a little faith here and that. Gave them, you know, faith in me. Well, she can still, <laughs> you know, she still got it or whatever they be saying. But, <laughs> but uh, 
that was the one, this is the one where he, he uh, this is Freedom Songs. I said, I need to sing some Freedom Songs. You know, it, it uh, Pops used to tell the songwriters, if you want to write for the Staples, read the headlines. Hmm. We want to sing about what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just try to sing a song to fix it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm seeing, still seeing, that, that uh, there's still bigotry. Yep. There's still, you look at, I, said, I looked at Katrina. Mm -hmm. I could not believe her. I said, nobody is helping these people. What would Dr. King say? My mind mm -hmm. always go to Dr. King. Mm -hmm. And um, then I read in the, in, 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 I, I see on the news, right in Chicago, a black family can move into a white neighborhood. They get in just fine. But the next morning, there's graffiti, inward, get out, on mm -hmm. their garage door. Mm -hmm. On their, their, their cars all spray painted. Mm -hmm. You got a cross in the, in the yard. Mm -hmm. and. Um, then you got New York City. Here's a, a policeman shoot a young black man 50 rounds. Mm -hmm. He's on his way to his wedding. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I started saying, well, well, it's not over. Mm -hmm. We still, you know, the movement, the, the struggle lives on. Yeah. We still have to, you, I'm still here. I can represent. I can sing these songs and, and, and live, I have lived this, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, uh, I told Andy, he said, well, Mavis, guess who's going to produce you? And I said, who? Rakuda. Rakuda's uh, a great yeah. guitarist, you know. So he said, I, I asked Rye, I've been trying to get him to produce someone on my label for the past four or five years. I said, Rye, will you produce this? No. Will mm -hmm. you produce so and so? No. Will you produce it? No. Will you produce Mavis Staples? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I, I said, oh my goodness, I feel so special. And it is a great record. Oh, it, it is a great record. I tell you, it's the best, best work I have ever done. Mm. He's playing guitar. You know, he, see, he, he plays a lot of pops and licks. Mm -hmm. That, you asked me, uh, did I feel my father's yeah. presence? My father was all up in that session. Uh -huh. I just, I just, I felt him. I, and then it, it, it would get so emotional, mm -hmm. some of these songs. When we'd finish, I, I just felt like running around the studio. You know, I just, just, just felt good, you mm -hmm. know. And um, that's why I talked to Pop so much in that record, you know. Yeah. I, uh, uh, and so many songs that, uh, you know, it, it, it I owe it all to my father. Pops, and, and, and I had the best father, well, everybody thinks so, you know, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. But Pops was a hands-on father. You know, he, mm -hmm. he, he would keep us children with him, and Mama would just let him, because she saw he wanted to keep the, you know, he, he would take us to the movies on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and take us to Sunday school on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And then he would make us peanut brittle, make us candy, mm -hmm. make us popcorn balls and play with us, you know. Mm -hmm. He played with me until, until I was 12. I was a baby for 12 years, then a little baby sister came along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. Well, I want to. I want. There's one song I want to ask you about, and um, I don't know if I have to share you with the audience. Are we going to have a Q and A? Yes. Yeah. Um, but I want to um, ask you about. I want to ask you many things. Yes. But this little light of mine. Yes. <laughs> which is such a pure and true and beautiful mm -hmm. song that mm -hmm. when you sing it has a complexity mm -hmm. uh, and depth to it that, yes, that I yes. think I haven't heard it with that that depth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what does that song mean to you? Uh, this Little Light of Mine is, is a song that I learned when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. And, and, and what, what Rakuda and I did, we would take these gospel songs and change the lyrics and make them freedom lyrics, mm -hmm. you know. But um, this little light, and, and see, the way he was playing that guitar, mm -hmm. he was playing that guitar, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, Lord, you know, this is, this is, this is just a glorious, glorious time, mm -hmm. you know, um, for, for me to be singing these songs, it's taking me in a full circle. I, 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 I could relive these, 
while I'm singing these songs, I'm seeing like a, a, a movie, mm -hmm. you know, and this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. It's just let your light shine. Mm -hmm. Let it shine. You know, open up. Let, today, let it shine on love. Mm -hmm. Let it shine on peace. Mm -hmm. It's giving of yourself and letting your, your uh, radiating the light, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you move, you leave a little light, you mm -hmm. leave a little love, you leave mm -hmm. a little peace, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's just, uh, you know, I'm not real good at, at um, describing, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty much up in age now, mm -hmm. and my mind done clicking fast, <laughs> see, <laughs> I'm stumbling over words You're here. clicking just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. My sister called me talk 'em up. She said maybe she talked too much. And I'm I'm labeled the mouth of the South. <laughs> but 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 you told me something on the way in here that two young men like my song. Respect yourself. Yes, these two young men right hey, here. Hey fellas, they're handsome mm -hmm. too. They belong to me. <laughs> They're your guys. Those are my sons, yes. Oh, that's what you like, respect yourself? Yeah. Respect yourself. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I told <coughs> Staples that that song contains everything you could ever possibly need to tell your children. That's uh, right. If you don't respect yourself. Ain't nobody going <coughs> to give a good kahoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, and you know that song. <clears throat> it 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 did what we wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Blackstone Rangers yes. was a gang in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And one of these guys stopped Pops on the street one day and said, Papa Staples, I'm so glad that you and your daughters recorded that song, Respect Yourself. Mm. He said, <clears throat> and see, these guys... They were gangs, but they weren't like the gangs today, yeah, just yeah, go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did good things for the community. They would have a, a breakfast for the kids whose parents couldn't give them breakfast in the morning. Mm -hmm. they, would, they, would, uh, they, <clears throat> they were keeping the community together. Mm -hmm. They were bad guys, but they were good at, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but he told Pops, he said, you know, Pop, I didn't, I didn't realize I wasn't respecting myself till yeah. I heard that song. He says, yeah. I would let the little senior citizens get on the bus, and I'm sitting down. I, instead of me getting up, letting them sit down, I would sit there. He said, but after I heard that song, I stand up and let the pop say, well, that's good. That's, that's what we wanted to, the song to do, to make you respect yourself first. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else will respect you. Because mm -hmm. if you don't respect yourself, Ain't nobody gonna give a good kahoot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good song. That's still a good song. That is still a great yes, song. Yes, indeed. Um, well, before I see if there are any questions, actually, you've mentioned the Blackstone Rangers. I have one yeah. more quick question. Okay. Um, I have to ask about the, my most important uh, artistic guide was Gwendolyn Brooks. Yes. Your neighbor, your yes. Chicago yes. neighbor, who, of course, worked <coughs> with those Blackstone Rangers. Yes, she did. Had poetry workshops with them and, and yes. so forth. And so, and I, I think of what you're doing alongside what Gwendolyn Brooks did, mm -hmm. what Sonia Sanchez does, what mm -hmm. some of the, the great black women poets mm -hmm. of a generation yes, did with, yes. with their art form. Yes. Um, so I wonder if, if, if you knew Miss Brooks, if, if you Do crossed you know, paths. We, we were... We were in a, um, where were we? I don't know if it was Operation Push mm -hmm. or, or some, in some place like that together. Uh, but I didn't, I couldn't get up to her. Mm -hmm. You know, I never met her. I mm. never, all this time we lived in Chicago together, I never had a chance to meet her. Mm -hmm. But she was great. She was yeah. a great lady. Yeah. And we still celebrate uh, Gwendolyn Brooks in Chicago. Um, <clears throat> I wish I could have met her. You know, it, it's, it's times when you're in places with special people like that mm -hmm. and um, whatever's going on. And, and me, I'm good at getting up to, to get up to someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but I couldn't that time. And um, I, I really uh, regret 
that I didn't get a chance. But I am so grateful that I got a chance to meet you. Wow. I'll tell you. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Me too. Yes, indeed. Me too. Um, well, there goes, there goes the microphone. There's a question so here back here. Questions. Is this the microphone? Oh. There she oh, goes. She's taking it up to someone oh, in, in the audience. Oh, I'm so, okay. Oh, I have hi. to share you for a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Nancy Hansen. It's an honor to hear you speak. Thank you. Um, I know your family is always saying from the headlines to help people, so it's almost like I've got this selfish question. I want you to read more about the headlines on health care reform. Okay. Because we need a celebrity spokesperson for single payer health care and the John Conyers bill. So I want you to look into that. All right. <laughs> All right. I'd be a politician. <laughs> I do know John Conyers now. I'll wait. All right. Hi. It's a pleasure to be here, to hear both of you. I would like to know, I'm working on something, and I would like to know if you all could name five influential African-American women throughout history, or living or dead. Who would be your top five? Oh. Sister Mahalia Jackson. Um, um, Sister Coretta Scott King. Um, uh, we could do it together. I could add something. Okay, too. you go. Sister Harriet Tubman. Oh, yes. Um, and I think that that whole fierce. Yes. Just Those if, you're, if we're moving forward. Yes. You know, you can't come with us if you're not moving you forward. You can't go. That's right. You got to move forward. So that forward. whole example. Mm -hmm. Harriet Tubman. Yes, indeed. We can say some more. Well, I would say I would say Gwendolyn Brooks Gwendolyn actually, Brooks. because I think um, I think she's the great voice in poetry of the 20th century, um, and the great voice um, for freedom and for human dignity and complexity. Mm -hmm, actually, mm -hmm. that's what I um, what I see in her. And who else? Yes. Who shall be our fifth? We have four now. Mm. Living. Who? Oh, living. living. Or oh, living one. Okay, Michelle Obama. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Is she great? Oh my goodness. She is awesome. And every single day she takes an opportunity to educate. Yes. And to yes, take us somewhere does. further and to imagine ourselves bigger mm -hmm. uh, and to live up to ourselves mm -hmm. every single day with every single public act. Mm -hmm. She's amazing She's and amazing. fabulous, and we're so lucky. Yes, indeed. We're so yes, lucky. Indeed. We have a question over here on the yes. side. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Ms. Staples. Um, it is an honor to be here to uh, listen to you speak about and, and share your story. I was taking a few notes on like things that you said, and one of the things that stuck out to me the most was um, when Pop, when Dr. King asked Pops um, to, are you going to sing my song today? Yeah. And about this, you know, I thought about like, you know, a religious service on like setting the mood for like the man of God to come and speak. And I was wondering if you could like elaborate on that just a little bit, like, you know, like bringing the church to like the protest and like setting the mood and like being like praise and worship for a protest mm -hmm. and like uh -huh. for church that like that really stuck out to me uh -huh. as like a, a person who sings praise and worship for a yes. church as well. Yeah. So like that really stuck out to me. So if you could elaborate on that a little bit. And okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Well, that is. Um you know, see these songs that we were singing, these are church songs. The, Dr. King, you know, people, people ask, did you sing any gospel songs during the movement? These are gospel songs. Gospel is truth. And, and with Dr. King being a minister, you have to, we weren't singing uh, secular songs. You know, we were singing um, um, just like th this little light of mine. You know, we, we of course, we brought, uh, the gospel and the praise into uh, the meetings uh, before uh, uh, Dr. King would speak. Some we sing songs. We sing uh, um, uh, some glad morning when the life is over. I'll fly away. Mm -hmm. You know we would we would have church. We would have service. You know all the time before he would speak. That's what it was about. It wasn't uh, just going to hear speeches. You know, we were going to church. We were, we were you know, it, it, it was just in all of us. 
uh, uh, Dr. Um, Tom, Congressman John Lewis. Mm -hmm. John, um, he wrote my liner notes, remember? Mm -hmm. And and uh, he told uh, my sister and I, we went to his office, so I, I wanted to let him know what I was doing. I wanted to, because I knew he was one of Dr. King's right-hand men. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to know that I was making these freedom songs again. And he, he was just so glad to see us. I was surprised that he even remembered us, you know. But he says, you all, your father and you all's music, uh, the songs that you sang kept us motivated, kept us inspired to keep on marching. You know, they were, they were, you all songs were the soundtrack of the movement. Mm -hmm. It made me feel so good, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Congressman John Lewis uh, remembered us and remembered our music. And, um, um, but, but yes, we, we are, we gospel singers first. You know, people ask today, well, you sing this, you sing. No, I am a gospel singer. That's home for me. Mm -hmm. That's home. That's where we started and that's where I still am. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, the, the, the staple singers have only sang one secular song, and that was Let's Do It Again. Mm -hmm. And for the movie, Let's Do It. Mm -hmm. And Curtis Mayfield, when he told Pops, he said, now Pops, this is your part. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, you know that part, I like you lady, mm -hmm. so fine with your pretty hair. Uh -huh. Pop said, Curtis, man, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> 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 he said, I'm a church man. I ain't, ain't going to say that. Curtis said, oh, Pop, please. He said, the Lord won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and we wanted to hear our voices on the silver screen, so we started begging Pop. So we said, come on, Pop. It's just a song. It's just a song. And we finally, and listen, Elizabeth, after we recorded that song, when Pop singing on the stage, and the lady starts screaming, when Pop said, I like you, lady, so fine. And oh, Pop. <laughs> And you look down there, and Pops was just smiling. I said, "Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> you Pops glad was you? fine too." Pop, hey, Pop Pops? was a handsome guy. Oh my goodness! I always tell people that if he wasn't my father, <laughs> <laughs> I would have hit on him. Yeah, yeah. Pops was a handsome man. Beautiful man. Olive color skin, and and uh, with his hair, you know, he knew he was sharp. <laughs> and see, he would be walking, we could be walking through the airport, nobody noticed us at all. <laughs> and they, pop stable. And then he would tell me after the people, Mayors, I tell you, it's the best thing I could do is, is walk with you. People know you. I, I said, Dad, those people didn't know me. They, didn't know me. <laughs> <laughs> they know you. Yeah, he was very distinguished looking. Mm -hmm. But yes, sir, we, we, are, we are still in the, in the, in the glory. Mm -hmm. We give God all the glory, all the praise. Mm -hmm. so, yes. yes. A question back here in the back. Okay. Sure. Mavis, hi. I'm here um, from New Britain, Connecticut with my wife, Elise. And, um, uh, sorry. Your talk today has been very inspirational to me. You've been inspirational to me all along and everything. And just coincidentally today, I'm not going to ask you any political or religious questions. <laughs> um, but just before we came here, we were watching The Last Waltz from 78. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, saw your performance of the weight with the band, and then of course the other performers that were on there, and being Bob Dylan being one of the uh, performers on there as well. Yes. Um, that was a fantastic Scorsese movie. I just wanted to question you about what was your relationship with Bob Dylan? Now see there. <laughs> now there you go. <laughs> you don't want to ask me. I figured you had you was coming with something like that. <laughs> I figured you. I'm not going to ask you about so and so. I'm not going to ask you about that. <laughs> but what was your relationship with? Well, uh -huh. well, Dylan. Oh my goodness. You know, I, th that doggone computer. <laughs> it lets everything out. Yeah, that's you know. Right. But this jockey asked me just what he asked me. I understand you and Bob Dylan were for getting married. I said, where'd you get that from? Uh -huh. Off the internet. I said, I can, that internet, I didn't know anything about the internet back then. This was a long time ago. But yeah, we were, Bobby and I, we met when we were teenagers. And um, 
when we met Dylan, and we were doing a Westinghouse TV show together, and his manager said, I want to introduce you to the Staple Singers. And he said, oh, I, I've listened to the Staple Singers since I was 12 years old. And Pop said, where do you hear us? He said, I listened to Randy. And Randy was a, a station out of Nashville, 50,000 watt station, that oh. we could all pick it up, you know. And he would hear us on. He even quoted some lyrics from one of our songs. He said, huh? Pops, Pops, you, 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 you have a velvety, smooth, velvety voice. <laughs> and Mavis, <laughs> Mavis, <laughs> Mavis, she has a rough, strong voice. And <laughs> Mavis said, young to come little David with this rock and sling. I don't want to meet him. He's a dangerous man. That mm -hmm. was from one of our songs, mm -hmm. Sit Down Servant. And, and Pop said, well, and, and so that was the, the uh, he went on to sing his song, and he started singing. We didn't, we didn't know Dylan. He started singing this song. Pop said, listen, y'all, listen to what that kid is saying. Mm -hmm. He says, we can sing that song. Uh -huh. and, and Dylan was saying, how many roads must a man walk down mm. before you can call him a man? Mm. And, and, and Pops could relate to that, see, because mm. Pops used to tell us how if he was walking on the same side of the street as a white man in Mississippi, he would have to cross over. Mm. He couldn't walk on the same. So he said, and, and we went right home and learned the song. We started mm. singing. But um, yes, sir, Dylan uh, is still my friend. We didn't get married. We, we mm. <laughs> We uh, we 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 we're, we're still friends though, but but. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> I wanna send my people after you. <laughs> my two little fellas here, y'all y'all gotta watch y'all gotta watch Auntie Mavis back. <laughs> Okay, thank you, sir. We have it. <laughs> thank you for letting our mom my she, secrets out. Front and out. A, a less uh, difficult question up here in the front. Uh, yes, yes. It's not lost on me that tomorrow is Father's Day, and because the concert has been rescheduled, is there a song you'll be singing tomorrow night that particularly reminds you of your father or that you'd like us to think about your dad or, you know? Oh, yes. Nice. You know, Father's can you, and if there is a song that isn't on the bill that should be, can you make that happen to help us remember your dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 um, you know, uh, we have a song. That's, that's interesting. We have a song for mother. If I could hear my mother pray again. Mm. But for father, you know, my Father's Day song is always, Will a Circle Be Unbroken? Mm -hmm. I can't get away from it. You know, um, uh, but uh, let's see, we'll sing. Do you, you have a request? No, I was asking if you have one. If I have a request? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yes, we, we, we'll sing. We'll, we'll make it good for you. We'll, we'll make it Father's Day. Um, I definitely always wish all of the fathers a happy Father's Day. We can do that today for that matter. Mm -hmm. You know, happy Father's Day, you guys. Mm -hmm. But um, um, that's a, that's, that, you know what? There is a song about father, mm -hmm. Luther Vandross. Mm -hmm. dance, dance, dance with, with my, my father. father again. You know, yes. yeah. But, mm -hmm. but I'd rather sing Luther's, I'm gonna try to pin my own mm -hmm. for my father. Mm -hmm. question right why don't you stand yeah, up? Yeah, pops. Oh, right. uh, that would be good. If, I'm, I'm just not, uh, like I say, my mind doesn't click like it used to. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not much of a writer anymore, but I'll do something. We'll do something good for you. Go ahead. OK. Hi, my name is Rachel. And I actually just want to thank you, because recently I've been going through some very tough times. And at one point, I was actually in the hospital. And basically, I was sitting in, you know, the little community room where all the other patients in my ward would sit and they would play games, the other children and I. And we were listening to the radio. One of the attendants had turned it on. And Respect Yourself started playing. And at that time, I didn't know who you were. I had never heard your music. But I said, oh, that's a nice song. <laughs> and so after I got out of the hospital, I started listening to it, you know, 
on the internet, you know. And afterwards, you know, my dad said, oh, we're going to go see Mavis Staples. And I'm like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and I just really want to take this opportunity to thank you for just making me respect myself. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's beautiful. No, go ahead. How does it feel being in the Arts and Ideas Film Festival, and what do you think that your fans get from it, and also what do you get from it? You know what, it's an honor to be here. Um, um, last year, we were here. <laughs> and well, we were still here, you know? But, um, um, and I think it's beautiful, um, uh, and especially to have this great lady, uh, um, Elizabeth, to, to uh, uh, interview me. You know, I've, I've been interviewed by many people, but not um, a poet as great as, as Elizabeth, you know, and I, I just feel, I, I, they didn't tell me either. Oh. No one told me. This is a shock. To, to when, when, you know, when, you, when I met you outside, I said, uh, why didn't you all tell me that Elizabeth was going to interview you? <laughs> We're the promoters, <laughs> but uh, it, I'm I'm grateful and um, I feel very good. You you filming this, huh? Yeah. Ah, okay. How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! All right. Okay. Well, well, yes. I I am very honored to be here, and hopefully this won't be my last time that's to right. be with you all. No, that's right. Thank you. That's right. We have one final question right here. Why don't you stand? Um, well, first I want to thank Professor Alexander for um, conducting this wonderful interview, and I want to follow in her footsteps by thanking you for making such transformative music um, and for touching us all. And I had my hand up earlier and then became terrified after the Bob Dylan question because I had a Bob <laughs> Dylan question too. But let me try and reformulate it a little bit. Um, if, if, given that you've worked with Bob Dylan, collaborated with him rather recently on the, um, the, the gospel covers album of his songs, um, I was interested both in relation to Bob Dylan and Prince, who you've worked with, right? If you could talk about what you think they're drawn to in terms of your singing, your style of performance, what would they say about you, why they keep coming back to you in so many ways? And, and I hope that you won't kick me out for bringing no, it back to No, 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 <laughs> no. You know, and that's a flattering question. That, that is, mm -hmm. I, I, myself, I, when Prince called me, <laughs> I said, Prince? Pops called, he said, maybe the Prince is looking. I said, Daddy, what Prince? I don't know no Prince. <laughs> <laughs> he said, girl, the one they call Purple. <laughs> I said, oh, no. I said, you mean Prince? What does he want with me? I was so excited. You know, but it does. I, I think about that. They, they, it's, I've never, I, Prince, he did, uh, write me a note one time and said, Mavis, you are the epitome of soul. And I tell you, I just, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I don't know, uh, even little Michael Jackson. My mother called me one day, she said, Mavis, this little old Michael Jackson stole your word. I said, what, mama? She said, turn on channel two. And that was Michael. I'm bad, you know it. Shamon, Shamon. You know, so Shamon. That's, that's yours. That's my word. That's my. Word. I made that word up. Shamon. And uh, see, on I'll take you there. I was trying to be slick, you know. Instead of saying "come on," I just said Shamon, Shamon. And he grabbed it. And but uh, Tom Jonah asked me. He said, Mavis. Did Michael give you anything on your, he's supposed to pay you. I say, Tom, here, I'm giving me one red set. Not one, but, but um, as far as, as those, uh, Prince and uh, Dylan, being, you know, I think what it is, you know, when I sing, I sing from my heart. Pops taught me, you know, 
I, I was a young girl. We were in New York City. There were some kids my age that sang before us. And, and they were jumping all across the stage and singing loud and you know. And so when we came out, I started doing that. Pop snatched me off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. He said, Mavis, what is wrong with you? Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, nothing, Dad. You know, I'm, he said, listen, let me tell you one thing. You don't need gimmicks for, the, to, for, for yeah. God's music. You don't need no, you don't need to sing at the top of your voice. Mm -hmm. You don't need to clown. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, you be sincere and sing from your heart and you will reach the people. You don't have, you can stand flat footed if you sing from your heart. So I think that when these young men hear me, you know, it's, I've never asked, but um, they just, I think, I think my voice and my sincerity comes across to people. And um, uh, Prince, he just, Maybe maybe you just you're the best singer, you best singer, yeah. you know. And and uh, I just I just you know I adopted him. <laughs> there wasn't no marriage there. Wasn't no. I press is my son. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm just grateful that they hear me and they and like I said, it's very flattering that these young men and geniuses, yeah. both of them geniuses, yeah. and. Um, for Prince, I was on Prince's label for seven years, and uh, we really made some good music. Mm -hmm. But I, I happened to be with him during the time of his and Warner Brothers fight, mm -hmm. you know. So I got hung up in that, and mm -hmm. you didn't hear the music much. But Prince wrote me some of the best songs, you know, uh, message songs. Mm -hmm. The Voice. Mm -hmm. There's a, a if you ever can get the CD, The Voice. Um, that's what Prince, uh, and we did two albums together. But um, I'm glad you asked that question. I'm, I'm, I, 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 um, Prince wrote me a song, as far as Dylan was concerned, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote me a song about my other husband. Oh. I married an undertaker. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. <laughs> This guy wouldn't lie. If they get a headache, they won't lie down. They're scared. They're scared. <laughs> I, said, I said, why don't you lie down? No, no, no. <laughs> no, he think he won't get, won't get back up. But um, Prince wrote me one of the best songs. The Undertaker, see, this is what he would do. He wouldn't talk to me when I first met him. And he just rolled his big eyes and smiled. He's just painfully bashful. So I said, how's he gonna write for me if we can't communicate? <laughs> you know, so I had to start writing him letters. I would write him 15 page legal Ooh. pad letters, you know. And, and Prince, if he kept all my letters, he has a fat book of my life, because I started from my child, from I was a little mm. girl. Yeah, I would tell him how, how I would be, couldn't wait for Sunday to come. My mother put my little cute little dress on, my little patent leather shoes, and I go to Sunday school. He has all of that in this CD, mm. the voice. Every song is something that I told him. Mm. So I told him I married an undertaker. So he wrote the song, The Undertaker. <laughs> but but uh, the, un the and it's another message song, is is saying, don't go to the crack. You might never come back. Here comes The Undertaker. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, it's a great song, mm -hmm. The Undertaker. And uh, he asked me, he said, Mavis, you think your father will play his guitar on your record? Uh -huh. I said, yeah, Pops will play his guitar. I said, Pop, Prince wants you to play. He said, all right. He come on down to play the part. And uh, <laughs> Prince, Prince was out of town, and his little yellow guitar was sitting over. Prince told one of them kids, he said, give me that guitar. And they all went, wow. oh my god, he's not supposed to play Prince's guitar. <laughs> he's not supposed to. <laughs> and, and they had a fit. Oh, Mr. Don't Tell Prince. I said, shucks, I'm telling Prince. I said, look, <laughs> Prince Pop played your little canary guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and he just smiled. He was honored that Pops had played his guitar. And look what he called Pops. 
we were there doing a television show. So mm -hmm. Pop's sitting there playing his guitar on a stool. Prince come by and says, are you gonna sing tonight, Junior? Oh. Pop said, what you call me, boy? <laughs> Junior. And he broke out running. You know, he just <laughs> messed with <him. laughs> So, So I've had some wonderful experiences with those guys, with Prince and Dylan. Dylan and I, that song Dylan and I did on that gospel record was nominated for a Grammy. And uh, they gave it to Sting. I told him. <laughs> <laughs> That's killing him. I told, <laughs> I told Bobby, I said, look, Bobby, we are not going to get that Grammy. Because last year, you took it from Sting in a movie. It was a movie, song from a movie. And I said, so now Sting is up against us, and Sting is going to, that's the way they do, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That's the Grammys, you know, politics. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but it was a good song. Got to change my way of thinking. That's the mm -hmm. way it was. And my sister Yvonne, he even had Yvonne on there. Mm -hmm. Yvonne was talking, he said, Mama, you know the way it starts out, uh, 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 we got any, any chicken? And yeah, because I was a visitor, and Yvonne in the studio, he said, Yvonne, you're going to be Mama. And when he, <laughs> he, said, when he said, Mama, Yvonne said, well, son, I think, he said, no, wait, Yvonne, not that kind of Mama. <laughs> not, not my Mama. <laughs> Just those, those mamas that be around, you know, the, the ladies that be around that can cook. Uh -huh. And um, so I've, I tell you, I, I've had a wonderful, you calling me? No. Oh. You, yeah. I've had a wonderful, wonderful life. Um, that my family has been singing now for 59 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wow. just so grateful to still be here mm -hmm. to, to, to see Obama, for one. <laughs> And uh, to, to be able to pass it on to youngsters, uh, uh, these young men and young ladies today, you know, to keep our, uh, and, and hopefully some, some kid will come along, like you already told me they sing Respect Yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep the staple singers going, keep us going, you know, and uh, grab some of our songs and you'd be surprised if you sing some of those old songs. Old songs, how many gigs you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I had a ball. <laughs> <laughs>